Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Take Down 32. I am Norman Rhodes. Alongside me, Josh McLeod, or whatever his name is. But for the past half an hour to an hour, we have been listening to the greatness of John Blackrose, who is out here demanding that he should get a rematch for the championship. And honestly, right now, I think he is speaking the truth. Okay, first of all, Josh Jepson, okay? Read your notes right, buddy. Well, that wasn't in the notes, but whatever. But maybe you should be, instead of worrying about what your last name is, listening to the greatness of John Blackrose. Yeah, John Blackrose has been in the ring for the past half an hour to an hour, but we just now got back on the air, and he won't shut up. He's demanding a towel shot. And I'll be honest, I don't think he deserves it. And, and how dare you insult such a, a great personality here in Black Rose. He has every right. I mean, we are here in America, right? He has every right to do this. Yeah, it doesn't mean he's going to get a towel shot, though. It's up to this man. Which exactly he should do. Give him a title shot. He absolutely deserves another shot. Oh, well, isn't that nice? Lucy well, said, please. Well, he is Canadian, by the way. And you know what? He deserves another shot. It is Joshua Bishop's fault in the first place for him having to deal with this. And look Joshua at Josh Bishop struts just put John Blackrose in his place. And if you mean by place that he just cocked out there then exactly this is all his fault first place that this is happening this man deserves another title shot and of course Joshua Bishop with his silver hair and his white suit comes out here and completely blue balls him you know what I'm gonna quote you from last week okay he yes he did he did earn his title shot but that was in a different era okay if he wants to get another shot, not another title shot, he needs to earn that to earn that shot again. You that heard the Prince. But Evan O'Shea is on his way out here as he's set to face Tyler Parks. Evan O'Shea, I love this guy. He's, I've watched him all over the world. He's competed in over in dozens of companies that I've seen. And, uh, but in all honesty, I don't, I really don't want him to win this match. Because the guy he's taking on deserves it much more. Well, I'm going to disagree with you as always. And say that Evan O'Shea, very talented individual, definitely deserves to win this match. And I can't wait to see his hand raised at the end of it. Well, I can't wait to see his shoulders on the mat because Tyler Park is going to put... Evan O'Shea down. Tyler Park has been up and down lately in, in DCA, but I think tonight he's going he's gonna to be leaving this arena with a smile on his face. Now you know why he's been up and down? Because he just can't cut it. Especially when he comes out here with creepy eye shirts, just like the one he's wearing right now. Don't look at the shirt, okay? Look at the man. I can't. It's staring, the shirt. it's staring at me. It's a print. It's staring at me. I bet he does have three eyes, and the one is right in the middle of his chest like he's Iron Man. Even though that's a core and not an actual eye, but replace it! Replace it! Either way, I think Tyler, Tyler Park has a very good chance at winning this match. He seems motivated. He knows what it takes to win. And even though ever Evan O'Shea is a bit more of a veteran, Tyler Park is a bit more of a wrestler. And that always going to get you, but so far, especially when you're going up against Mr. Evan O'Shea. Oh, 
Also, his theme sucks. Wow. Yes, I'm critiquing everything about it. Wow. Well, you know what? Keep on talking because I can't wait to see Tyler Williams thing just because of the fact that Evan, despite being a veteran, I, I think he's just going to look past Tyler towards Smoke is there. He's going to look past Tyler Park to the field wrestler. Take hey, sure. I mean, he has a big challenge coming up at zero hour day, and he's probably not going to really focus on this match too much, and that's going to cost him. Plus the fact that Tyler Park really knows what he's doing. I, I mean, you, have you been watching this show lately? Norm, I, I mean, I know you've been at the commentary table, but I'm not sure you've been really paying attention with your commentary. Well, let me tell you something here. Tyler Parks, or should I say, Evan O'Shea, if he's smart, which I think he is, not only is he going to focus on this match and getting the W, but he's also going to go on to Zero Hour and defeat Smokey. I mean, if he's able to defeat him on Twitter in the War of Words, he's going to be able to defeat him in the ring. Um, Norm, we all know that Evan O'Shea's louder on Twitter than he is in the ring. Well, we will see here tonight because I think Evan O'Shea is probably one of the best around. You know what? You say Evan O'Shea is one of the best around. I say Tyler Parks is one of the best around. We're about to see what happens right now. And what we're seeing right now, Evan O'Shea with that big kick to the back. To the lower back, I should say. So far tonight, this match has been very technical. A lot of reversals have been used, a lot of holds, and then Tyler Parks kick out 4-1. See, that smarts right there, actually both smarts by both men, I'm going to admit that because both of them going for quick covers here at every ch opportunity that they get. Evan O'Shea ducking under, using those kicks, taking out the legs. Good job right there. Evan O'Shea does have kicks on the side, but... I think Kyle Parks is going to bounce back on this one. Well, if he has no legs to stand on, which it looks like he's working right now, <laughs> he's not going to win this match. By the end of this match, he's just going to be crawling around on his belly like a baby. Evan O'Shea, like you said, he's really trying to work out the lower parts of this man, trying to take out the leg. And again, this is smart. You the legs if you want to do some damage. And it's the smarts of Evan O'Shea, and that's why I said at the beginning of this match, if he's smart, which he is, he's going to win this match, and he's going to win the match against Smoke at yeah, zero hour. Going for a pin here, one, and a shoulder up there, because he could barely... Use those legs with the damage that's, that's been done so far. You know, this could also be the reason why he is working the legs, because he's trying to set up for the stripes, too. On how Park kick it at two. Parks just can't seem to get some offense in here. You know, just from looking at this, he's he's not only going for Alex, he's going for every part of the body. He's really pointing out those legs. Now he's working on the arms and the gut, trying to limit Tyler's gold rush. And amazing how he was able to get it out of the pin right there. Is Back to the leg. being shown by Tyler Park. Well, I don't know how much longer that's going to last here because Evan O'Shea working every part of the body. I think the only part he hasn't been worked yet is the head of Tyler Parks. And once he starts working that out, oh, maybe I spoke too soon. Oh, there you go. That's how you been wanting. And how he was able to kick out of that is way beyond me, but good God. Oh, Tyler Parks, German suplex. That's what I'm talking about. If he is somehow going to find the strength here. Oh, what? Oh, man. Evan O'Shea up top. And nice move off the top. Hooks the leg, hoping for a pin here, but he still gets out of that pin.
Josh, have you ever seen such a methodical approach to a match like this in your time as commentator? Yeah, I've seen it as how it parts. But have you seen it it's done so very, just flawlessly? Look at how Evan has controlled this match up until this point. Most of the damage in this match has been done by Evan O'Shea. But now the damage is being done by Tyler Parks as he climbs to the top. And maybe that was a big mistake right there by Tyler Parks to get up on the top rope. Or maybe not because he was able to jump off and execute that. Now a German suplex. Tyler Parks being very vicious with those German suplexes. We can see the damage that those moves can do to a person if you do enough of them. You know, I think he's just desperate at this point. Desperate? What are you talking about? Because look what it, what's happened to him throughout this whole match. His legs have been worked. His arms have been worked. Hell, his torso has been worked. But he still man finds a way to get out. And I think at this point now, he's just trying, Josh. He's just trying to pull off every high-impact move he can to gain some momentum back in this match. I think Evan O'Shea might be in a little bit of trouble. Oh, look at that reversal there to T-Bone. Uh-oh. Hang on. O'Shea has him up. The safe player. Come on. I can still, I can still win the thing. Evan O'Shea. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, no. Uh -huh, you uh -oh. gotta be kidding me. Smokey here. He that better show crazy. his face. He better show his face. Maybe he's too scared. Oh, no, no, Parks versus the Soul Resident. And now Park ties him up. Oh no, this. Yes. This is unbelievable. And I told you, Norm. Tyler Park Absolutely unbelievable. The technician shown by Tyler Park being able to escape the Soul Resident. Oh man, that was How awesome. much did that man get paid in the back to do that? How much did that man in the back get paid? Because that was absolutely ridiculous. But what are you talking about? It was that, you know what I'm talking about, Josh. You are not deaf. You can hear me right now. I'm sitting next to you. You heard the music yeah. all here in the arena. You're you heard what happened. Dude. I have no clue what you're talking about, man. Oh, well, you just sit there and act stupid. Welcome back to DCA Point Blank. I mean, I mean, takedown. What is wrong with you? <laughs> I guess we all get one, right? And you know what? Like Black Rose earlier in the ring, Josh, even though you had your flub there. Zach Stone speaking the truth. Both of these men deserve their title shots. So they've earned them. They shouldn't have to go back and do something that they've already done before. You know, when you're in a company like this, you have to earn multiple shots to get one shot. Multiple shots without bitching about it, by the way. 
Well, I wouldn't call this complaining. I call this airing grievances. Well, then you've been airing grievances all night. Well, you know what? Maybe you are deaf or blind or both. And you know what else? Joshua Bishop is unqualified. He shouldn't be the director of wrestling operations here in DCA. He isn't qualified to do it. Hell, he isn't even qualified to do it in his own league. And you know what? I want to see Joshua Bishop step in the ring with Zach Stone and Black Rose. Well, that's not his job here. Well, it needs to become his job. I've seen him wrestle. And we got a match coming up here tonight. Uh, this guy, TJ Kennedy, is going to be taking on Calvin Richardson. You know, this guy, TJ Kennedy, I've never seen him before. This guy is apparently from Battle Pro. Well, I can't wait to see what he does in the ring. I don't know much about him either. So this is going to be a learning experience for both of us, maybe. I do want to say, though, I got a question that haircut. I think it looks uh, pretty darn good on him. I mean, you know, that's what the kids are doing these days. Well, with you the know what? You're not a kid, Norm. No, that's why I said the kids these days, that's what they're doing. Implying I that I may be older than the gentleman in the ring. I swear, God, next week I see you at the commentary table with that haircut. Hey, if I come out here with that haircut, it's going to be fabulous. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I said fabulous. You got a problem with it? Want to fight about it? Big whoop. Want to fight about it? Come on. Put your dukes up. Okay, Norm, sit down. We got, we got another match going on here. Just sit down. Put your headset back on. I'll make you bleed. Sit down, Norm. You, you, you're uh -huh. embarrassing yourself. You're Calvin, embarrassing. Calvin Richardson riding out here like he's the Undertaker back in the early 2000s. Well, I'm not sure. I, I actually kind of like what he does with his entrance. You know, he, he comes out and he, he does something that nobody else on the roster does. He takes his own vehicle down to the ring and rides it down because he wants to be different. I think that's, that, that's, a, that's just something that works in this company. Well, the real question is, does he have a license to ride that motorcycle? Because right now he's just clogging up the whole arena with his exhaust. Save the planet, people. Save the planet. Actually, as to talk about the uh, match later tonight, you know, we're speaking of Battle Pro, TJ Kennedy in this match, making his debut. Malik Brown is in action against Atlas Jones for the DCA World title. And after last week, we may or may not see a new champion. Even though Malik is in his hometown of Nashville tonight. Malik, I believe he has the hometown advantage, so I believe that we will see a new world champion tonight. And what a great night it will be if we can. A historic night for here on DCA Takedown as TJ Kennedy goes to the cover by a kick at it, too. And what a big night it will be for this young man right here, TJ Kennedy, making his DCA debut. If you get victory over Calvert Richardson, but I don't see that happening. Taking down with a big boot. Uh, I would love to see a victory here from TJ Kennedy. I love seeing debuting stars especially T.J. Kennedy, make a big impression here. And if he can get a victory night taking down Cal uh, Calvin Richardson, what a big night it'll be for this young man, especially what a debut it will be. But his chances may be getting shot down right now. It's Calvin Richardson just going to work on the torso. Well, I will have to point out here, uh, just from... Looking at the styles of both men so far, Calvin Richardson is more of a brawler. And TJ yep. Kennedy uh, still trying to scout him out a little bit. Oh, God, you see that fist? 
by Calvin Richardson that took down took down TJ County and he just goes flying over to the top. You see the strength advantage shown by Calvin Richardson. Jesus it's kinda Christ. awkward. It's kinda ironic. Calvin Richardson is that guy you would expect to be this big biker, big tough guy, and he rides down to the ring with his motorcycle. Yeah, he's really taking TJ to task here at the moment. Oh God, bouncing his head off our announce table. You know, last week we looked at uh, Malik Brown and Atlas and how Atlas pretty much manhandled him throughout the, the whole entirety of the match and then Malik was able to pull off that victory. Maybe the same can happen in this match. But with TJ Kennedy. Well, hang on, TJ Kennedy picking up Calvin Richardson. And also... Yeah. He needs to watch out for that blackout elbow in this match. Kick out there too. He is kind of, he's impressing me. He knows what he's doing, but Richardson just, uh, he, he, he's a quick guy. He's quick for his, for his height and his speed. He's very fast and he can always reverse something out of nowhere, but TJK is still fighting back. And Calvin, I'm sure, is looking to earn a house shot like everyone else in DCA, however. Well, he might be closer than he thinks, but TJ up top. Uh-oh. TJ Overcastle. Big high risk paying off there for him, Another right? Another high risk move, bouncing off the rope. Using that speed to his advantage. Oh, I thought that was it. TJ Kennedy is fighting back. He knows what he's doing. Oh! Turn that Sambo suplex around. What is this? Uh oh Super kick. Right to the kisser. That could be it. Hook of the leg. And he kicks out. Oh, I'm sorry. He got the shoulder up. And, oh, God. He's just lifting him up there. Now, a spin combo. No, he lands right on his back. So much momentum he had just now. He just got the wind taken out of him, and now Rick Calvert oh, is throwing him around like a rag doll, going for the cover, but a kick out of two. How did he kick out from that? I don't know, but Jesus Christ. Now you can see Calvin just toying with with with, uh, T, with TJ. He knows that he's light. He can do what he wants with him, but he goes for a high-risk move, and TJ gets out of the way. That's another part where he's light. He can move really quick, and that might just save him the match as you see a cutter. Yeah. A neck breaker by oh my god don't oh, I think they're right the first time yeah that was a cutter he did not over castle all the way across the look ring. at the range he has the guy has legs and he knows how to use them you say the guy has legs yes I heard in a local newscast I thought it would work in this situation because he definitely used his legs to jump that far across the ring to pull that off I'm sure that both these men do have respect for each other, but in this match, they're not fighting for respect. As he goes for a cover, but a kick out too. They, they do respect each other. In this match, they try. They put that respect behind them. As oh wait, TJ goes for a cover. He rolls him up. Uh, they're trying to prove so themselves. Close. We all know that their boy Joshua Bishop is watching this match. They, they both want to get in line for the title shot. You mean the unfit Joshua Bishop, by the way? Unfit to lead. But we're going to worry about that another time. Something to notice, something to point out, you can see multiple covers by both men. They're trying to throw them off guard. And every time you have to kick out of a pinfall, then that takes so much more out of you. Has, rolls them up, but a kick out too. A lot of small packages and rolls up by TJK. I, I don't think we should be talking about small packages again. With Rick Nett being here, who is unfortunately on vacation. You know, right now, I'm sure he would be looking at Calvin Richardson as part of the diamond list. Which you're still not on, by the way. Oh, yeah, and you are? I probably am. Especially after last show. Trust me, I, I, I don't really want to be on that list. Calvin Richardson throws him down to the ground with a body slam. 
And uh-oh, hang on now. Oh my God. Oh God, the step off backbreaker by Richardson. Such power, very hurtful. How did he kick out of that? Uh, what, oh my God, I am just amazed at how he kicked out of that. He could literally got a, have gotten a broken back off of that. As throws Calvin Richardson oh, into the step. You want to take down a powerful man like that, you got to use the steps, man. You got to use the steps, and that's exactly what he did. Obvious that TJ Kennedy knows what he's doing in this ring. And if he can take down Calvin Richardson, what a night it'll be. What is he doing? I, I don't believe this is a no disqualification match, but I don't know. He put that chair down. I didn't think he was actually getting, he might have been getting a little frustrated. Maybe, I don't know. Jesus Christ, what a move right there. Face first into the mat. Now, TJ Kennedy trying to call for something, but Calvin Richardson saw Caesar coming and takes him down with a fist. Now, Richard, Richardson calling something for himself. Could be another step off backbreaker. Oh, no. Oh, my God, another takedown a power slam excuse me uh, sorry maybe another or should i say the blackout elbow he's trying to set up for here as way no tj kennedy rolls him up three and tj kennedy using that battle pro knowledge that skill bringing it here to dca was with a successful getting tongue tied here so excited what an upset they don't like that haircut. Um, I'm going to continue to love the haircut. But ladies and gentlemen, oh, I'm sorry, please. Up next, we have a DCA World title match. As we know, it is going to be between the world champion, Alice Jones and Malik Brown. Look at Dante here. Dante Styles. The new DCA Destiny Champion. This is also his hometown because he is the brother of Malik Brown. I remember he defeated Alexander Washington at 30 to get that that very championship. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back, and it is time for the World Championship is on the line. Yeah, Josh, are you ready for a main event of epic proportions? Because I am. This right here, this match has all the qualifications of being match of the year. We're going to see Atlas Jones defending his DCA World Championship against Malik Brown in his hometown of Nashville, Tennessee. And there we see Atlas Jones. I have to mention last week how Atlas Jones took Malik to task. And Malik somehow, someway was able to pull off a big victory against him. 
last week. Now tonight, he has the opportunity to do the same, but maybe the match will go a little differently. I don't know. If the match goes the same this week as it did last on uh, uh, Takedown 21, then we're going to see a new world champion. Well, also, we have to look at, even though he has home field advantage, I'll look at Atlas here to do what the NBA away team does when they're away, or should I say they're on the road against the home team. Dominate early and silence this home crowd. Make this a mute button match. Alex Jones has a chance to do just that. He has a chance to take Malik down the side, but the only problem is, where's his uh, mind state at after last week's loss? Does he, does he feel like he can win this? I'm sure he does, I feel. I, I think he's thinking of last time as a fluke. Because he dominated that match, and he knows he can win against this guy. And tonight he has just the opportunity to do that. Now we're waiting to arrive with Malik Brown. And this crowd is lighting up. Also, I have to mention, we saw his brother... Dante backstage before the break. He's watching here tonight. Yeah, there's multiple reasons why he could be watching, but may or may not find out. And by the way, new DCA Destiny champion is Dante Styles. He won down his debut on uh, Takedown 30. And uh, Malik Brown a bit of a new look. Yeah, new look, new haircut, which, by the way, you might not approve of from your comments earlier. Well, uh, I, I know my boundaries, and I'm not going to talk about Malik Brown in a, in a bit of a wrong way. I will point out, though, that you can see on his jacket right there, even on his jacket, it says, No Mercy. You know that he's going to have no mercy against his opponent tonight. He is fired up, and he's ready to win the DCA World Championship. Well, he better be fired up because he's facing one of the most powerful champions in DCA right now, and that was Jones. Whether this is his hometown or whether this is Japan or Indonesia, wherever, it doesn't matter. He needs to be fired up here tonight. And also, I have to also point out, if the match goes the way it did the last time they face each other, both brothers could be champion coming out of tonight's event. I'll say that you see Malik Brown and both Alex Jones, they've been, they've been ready for this match ever since last week. Malik Brown looking to get a bit of revenge, too. I'm, excuse me, not Malik Brown. Alex Jones looking to get a little bit of revenge after last week. Trying to even the playing field. And I think he has the arsenal to do it. And I don't know who this prick is in the middle of the ring, but I want him to shut up, and I want this to start flying. Looks like, just thought I'd point out that looks like uh, the new look for the championship. I haven't really gotten the chance to point it out. I haven't really gotten a good look at it, but it's like Alex Jones has taken out the uh, former look that was brought in by uh, insert bloody name here. <laughs> oh, I guess our knowledge doesn't go back that far, huh? Nope, not at all. Anyways, these two looking to go as Malik Brown takes him down immediately. You can see he's fired up. He wants to win this title. And he's going to give it everything that he can. And you know, we saw the last time it was Atlas who had the upper hand in the early going of this match. Malik is trying to reverse fortunes here. Malik did get the first shot in the match. You gotta give him credit for that. But you know, Alice got the first shot in the last match, and he wanted, and he wound up losing. Will be the same here tonight. Well, right now you see him trying to run into Atlas, and isn't that really working out for him too much? Not really making too much of a dent on Atlas. Oh, oh God, look at that! You see, he was trying to take him down, but Alice, Alice was just, he was just wiping those punches straight off. He, Dale even took it. And yeah, took him down with a, a big haymaker of his own. Oh my God, squishing him! You know, Malik Brown, he is—he is much smaller compared to Alex Jones. 
Alex using his power just like last week. And that's exactly what I expect. Oh, oh man. The slap. And Malik Brown going diving. Such disrespect from Malik Brown. It's all about the world title. These men will do anything. It doesn't mean you have to disrespect your opponent for such a, a cheap tap like flapping them. Use your fist. Well, it might be smart. You know, yeah, I think that he could be trying to throw him off his game. Took him down right there. And now, oh man! The stomping on the gut, and we could have a new world champion! No! Kick out that two by, Al by Alex Jones. Too early and not enough damage, my friend. You saw Malik trying to get a fast one here. And trying to get a fast one, but you gotta do a lot more work on Mr. Atlas Jones here, which is looking like he's gonna try to do here. Look at him trying to take out the arm. No, we saw him in the last match. We saw him use a lot more speed. Looks oh, like hang he's on now. On the pit. Oh, man, that right there could bust you open if you're not careful. You know what? I'm actually looking to see if he could pull off violence party here. What's Malik doing here? This, oh. Uh, Malik has evil intentions, Norman. Malik has some evil thoughts going on. What has he got playing here? Oh, man! And listen to these fans here in Nashville, all on the side of Malik. Where is Malik going now? He's stalking his opponent right now. Look out below! Oh, no, he missed! And that could be costly for him. You saw that as soon as Alex realized that he missed, just... You saw the look at Alex's eyes, he's like, oh man, you just made a mistake, buddy. You could see it. You could see what he was thinking. And now a German suplex on the outside. We've seen enough of those tonight. I have to mention here, the winner of this match will go on to face Jordan Sylvia at zero hour. And if Malik wins here tonight, just think of the possibilities there. I don't remember just think of that match that Remember the last time Jordan Sylvia and Malik Brown were in the ring? Oh, oh my God! God. Still step. Jesus Christ! And it, you know, <laughs> I just witnessed some pretty brutal stuff myself while I was over in Japan. But Jesus, pulling out all the stops to retain the title, but he kicked out at two by Malik Brown. I'm surprised his back isn't broken at this point. Mine would. I know that much. No steel steps from flying off of that suplex. You don't see that too often. Maybe, maybe on a tiger suplex. <laughs> maybe on a, a, a choke toss, but no, not a, a big suplex like that. I mean, no, no, it is no, Atlas no, Jones, no, no, no. by the way. That, that was just a that was just an old-fashioned vertical suplex, and it was a, and it was effective. But Malik Brown's recovering. Maybe he's trying to feed off of the crowd here tonight. Atlas Jones not doing a good job of muting this crowd at all. Good God, what a half Nelson suplex. Now, he's got Malik Brown up. Oh, man! Power and strength going for the pen. And like you said, power and strength describe this man. Complete domination by Atlas Jones so far. Oh, he's going to go for it again. Oh, we saw that move earlier in the match. Well, I would love to bring up what we we saw. Suplex, repeat. Is he going to... Oh, well, might as well start saying that now. Suplex, repeat. Now you see, he's just in the repeat button on these suplexes now. What's he got playing here? Malik Brown, elbow to the face. And it's, uh, 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 excuse me. Sidestep, a sweep. As he did, oh my oh god! Oh god, that moon stomp! And moon? I think we are preparing ourselves here for the balance party! In my entire wrestling, commentating, journalism career, I have never seen a, a move like that. A moon stomp. Wait a second. You said you were, a, you were a journalist? What? Yes, I'm a broadcast journalist. Uh, what, what did you, what, what did you break? 
No, uh, well, and he goes for the cover. <laughs> oh, he got the shoulder up. It's going to take a lot more than that to take out Atlas Jones. Oh, you thought he ain't trying to take out the knee. We saw this earlier against the small man taking down the big man. You have to aim for the leg because he doesn't have legs. He's not a big man anymore. We well, also saw this in the Evan O'Shea match earlier where he very smartly took out the legs. But, you gotta think, Evan O'Shea did lose that match. Yeah, but he still went for the legs, and that's exactly what we're seeing here in this match. He's going after the legs because it's a smart... Oh, hang on now! Roll up out of nowhere! Three, no! The referee's hand was going down for three. So oh, so hang on now, Malik! The high knee! And that, that really could have been it right there. That could have knocked him out. Maybe, maybe not. No, it won't be it. Oh, I could have sworn I saw the rest of hand hit the mat. I don't know about you, but the question that's going to cross my mind is what do these two men have to do to put each other away and win the championship? Oh, Atlas is fighting back. It looks like he got a second win. I mean, he just kicked out of the Jaguar knee. That's, that, oh, man. And the he just threw his body, body right at him with that spear. And now going for, what is that? Oh, man. Almost, oh, I was about to say suplex your peak. But once again, he kicks out. Oh, no, he's got even on tension. He's 10 feet in the air. And he goes down hard. Malik Brown, is, he's the smaller man in this match. He's not used to getting thrown around like this. Oh, my God, a huge clothesline. That huge clothesline taking his, his head off there. That's it. Is that enough it. and it won't be? Malik Brown is still fighting back. He will not die. This is a completely different match from, from last show, Josh. I have to admit. Oh my god, a huge... Oh god, he's going back up top. He's yelling at him to get up. And missed oh, a drop a kick. Drop kick. Like I said, this is a very different piece, and it could be because the world championship is on the line, and you do anything you can for the championship. Yeah, but you just got to look at Atlas Jones, okay? He will he would rather die than lose that title. And I think he's really gonna do that tonight if he keeps on fighting. I would rather die than see Atlas Jones lose the title. Well, you may you may be on death row tonight because I think that Malik Brown is thinking about closing in soon. But now that George is fighting back and forth, what will it take? And now the two just were exchanging blows there, and Atlas Jones getting the upper hand. And then, uh, I spoke too soon as Malik Brown fighting back. Oh, my God. What an intense matchup here between these two. If you would have told me before this match started that we would be seeing such a match, I would tell you you're crazy. Man. Wait a minute. Whoa, wait a second. It's Jordan Sylvia. George Sylvia is out here. Well, th Remember, he faces whoever wins this match. Well, this match is ending in disqualification. I, I mean, because he attacked Atlas Jones. And now he's just brutalizing him. I, I have to say, yeah, going after Atlas Jones, and I think it's very clear, he didn't want Malik to win at all. He wants Atlas Jones. And he wants him a zero hour. Uh-oh, uh -oh, here comes Joshua Bishop now. Trying to make order, but I think it's already been lost. A triple Whoa. threat match. 
Oh god, the stakes just got raised even higher. Jordan Sylvia just put himself in a very bad position. And, and I don't know about that, but I think Atlas Jones is in an even worse position to retain his championship now. Now he's just screaming at the stage. As well as he should. I mean, we are talking about Joshua Bishop here. Oh, hang on. But wait out. a second. I think Malik Brown, he's not very happy to get where he George Sylvia. Malik Brown is not happy to get Malik Brown will also have to be in that triple threat match now. His chances are lower too because of George Sylvia. Good God almighty. That is a statement right there. Now and he has... And making an even bigger statement by wearing Atlas's world title around his waist. I'm going to tell you something. He's going to pay big time at Zero Hour. It doesn't matter if there's one man, two men, three men, 15 men. Malik is in for a big one at Zero Hour.